So I'll try to cover as many of the steps as I can without belaboring it. This is removing a Westerbeek uh, 30B engine from a Gemini catamaran, this case 2001, uh, 105 MC. Uh, the first thing I started with was um, loosening as many of the engine mounts as I could. Some of them I was able to take the the single big bolt off, the nut off of that that the engine sets on. Some of them I was not able to get to that, but I was able to take out the two uh, lag bolts that hold the engine mount into the engine bed. But uh, that's one of the first steps. The other first steps are, of course, disconnecting all cables, hoses, electrical wires, whatever attaches to the engine. Uh, get all of that out first. Some of it's uh, easier than other things. Getting the uh, muffler part, the exhaust part off with the uh, big hose, that could be a challenge in itself. But uh, basically strip as much as possible. Um, it took me about two days. This was working primarily alone with a little help at the very end to get the motor off the boat. Um, and I disassembled as much of the motor as I could uh, in order to make it lighter and easier to maneuver. I think the uh, parts that have to be removed for it to fit out of this tight space is uh, the starter motor. Um, and um, the alternator also, I believe, has to come off. Also, when you're getting ready to take everything off the engine, uh, drain your antifreeze, drain your oil, do anything you can to uh, make things work tidy and take some weight off of it. Also, I did uh, use a chain hoist, which I borrowed from a neighbor. Um, you probably could do it with a come along or a block and tackle or something, but the chain hoist is very effective because you can move it an eighth inch at a time. You, so you can lift it up, you can pull it forward, you can ease it back a half inch, which is a little more difficult with um, a come along or a block and tackle. So I would highly recommend a chain hoist if you have to rent it or purchase it or borrow it. In this case, I used some timbers and blocks I had laying around. Uh, also, if you look at the top, um, the chain hoist is not hanging um, from this piece of wood, but behind that piece of wood is an inch and a half uh, stainless steel pipe, which is sitting on top of the uprights. The piece of wood that goes across is just to hold the thing together steady to create a solid frame but the chain hoist is hanging from an inch and a half piece of stainless steel pipe which is sitting on top of the uprights. The whole rig is tied off uh, in a number of places to the uh, stainless steel frame that goes uh, in the back of the boat for um, your surround um, whatever it's called um, so everything is secured uh, very securely, and basically the two big uprights are supporting the weight. Uh, the, the, the blocks on the bottom are just to distribute the weight across the uh, other side hatches. I have, of course, uh, removed the hatch that goes over the engine. So these are just pictures I snapped at different stages, basically when I sat down to take a drink of water or to rest or to figure out what the next step was. So maybe one of the pictures will show you something that might be worth thinking about. Um, one of the uh, big rev revelations for me was uh, you can set this engine down on the oil pan and it will support it. I actually went through considerable time and effort to put blocks under it and I put the engine mounts back on the engine so that it could sit on the blocks. But through this process, uh, I discovered that uh, it does sit on the uh, oil pan. Uh, maybe it varies by year or something, I don't know, but mine did. It supported the weight of the engine, which made things a lot simpler. Um, now, one thing I did was I really stripped 
the engine down, maybe unnecessarily. Supposedly it weighs 275 pounds, including the transmission and so forth. Um, I didn't weigh it, but uh, it's heavy. Uh, now I'm over 70 years old. Maybe if you're 35 years old and you have a friend also 35, the two of you may be able to lift it up. But I was planning on doing this myself, so I took every effort I could to reduce the weight not only the weight, but the awkwardness and the balance of it. So as you can see, uh, first I did uh, inch it out of the um, the engine compartment. Uh, and once that came out, I set it in the cockpit on some blocks. And then I took off the uh, bell housing, the transmission, the manifold, uh, some other parts. Um, one thing about uh, taking the bell housing off, which I wasn't sure if there was something inside that also locked it on uh, because I couldn't get it off. Uh, I looked online. I couldn't really find anything definitive. Uh, learned how to change transmissions and a lot of Chevrolets and Pontiacs. But what it turns out is even though it doesn't slide off readily, if you do decide to take the transmission bell housing off, there's a bunch of bolts that go around the perimeter of the bell housing which bolt into the engine. Once you get all these bolts out, it will come off. Now I ended up uh, prying it off side by side, sticking a screwdriver in one side and, and then a um, small pry bar, uh, opening it up a quarter inch and then going to the other side, opening it up a quarter inch, coming back, opening it up a half inch and just basically wiggling it off uh, using uh, wedges screwdrivers and pry bars but there is nothing holding it on it's just on a spline that comes out of the uh, engine itself but it may be a little rusted or a little corroded and it's it's locked in there but if you if you work at it uh, it will come off another thing I spent a lot of time researching and fretting over and contemplating was could I lift this engine with the boom of the boat without damaging anything. Um, this is another reason I stripped as much weight off the engine as I could because I was uncertain about it. What I did end up doing was um, running the, uh, leaving the topping lift on the boom, running the main halyard back to the end of the boom, and also running one of the jib, jib hal halyards back to the end of the boom, and then um, securely putting on this. Uh, four or five part um, block and tackle and that is how I once the engine was out of the engine compartment and sitting on the uh, cockpit sole how I lifted it back up onto the seat I put uh, blocks on the back seat across the whole thing and hooked it to the boom and lifted it up and basically edged it across to the corner uh, uh, on the starboard side, which was on the dock side, and then used the boom to lift it from the seat up to the upper seat. Then I needed to unhook um, everything from the boom and move it to the outside of the uh, stainless pipes that support the roof and the uh, enclosure and so forth. Now, what I used as a block and tackle I guess it's six part. I use the uh, the main uh, sheet for the for the main, uh, but I turned it upside down because if you use it the way it's set up to run the boat, the locking mechanism is down at the bottom, and if you're going to be lifting the engine out, you want uh, the locking mechanism at the top, and you want to be pulling from the top down rather than from the bottom up. So I did use the uh, the main sheet uh, tackle, six part, I guess is what it is on the Gemini, uh, but turned it upside down, and again used uh, the halyards, the main halyard and the jib halyard and the topping lift to extra support for the boom. Um, probably overkill. It looked like it would work fine. So again, edged it over to the starboard edge of the seat, lifted it up onto the other seat, disconnected the, um, the block and tackle, uh, the main sheet system, moved it outside of the pipes, and then 
lifted it up and swung the boom out over the dock and dropped it down to the um, rolling cart that I had purchased to move the new outboard engine down to the boat. Now, that's the reason I took this out, because the, um, the Silette drive failed. The engine was fine. Had a mechanic come go over it in the beginning of the season. He said it looked great. Um, but the Silette drive had a problem, and so we changed out the engine to a uh, Mercury 25-horsepower outboard. Um, oh, uh, here is a picture of the transmission and the heat exchanger. I think I did take the heat exchanger off before I took the engine out. Not sure of that. But uh, anything, if you are going to take it off, anything you can get off before you pull it out will make it a lot easier. Uh, you see, we did have to get it out of the uh, boat off the dock. There's only one shot of this cart. We purchased this cart. Supposedly will hold 1,200 pounds. Got it from Canadian Tire. Probably will hold 1,200, but uh, easily will hold the weight of this engine. Uh, and we use that to um, get it, roll it off the dock, and then pulled it up the stairs using uh, block and tackle, and then put it in the shed. So I guess that's that's the story. Things to remember is uh, first disconnect everything take everything off you can uh, I don't know how much disassembly you have to do I would do as least as you need to once the engines out but there is a certain amount you have to do to get it out um, good luck if you plan to take this on whether you're doing it yourself or just advising the boatyard about how to do it uh, a lot of documentation both for this installation that I've put up there, but other people have also put information on the Gen Gemini catamaran uh, discussion forum. Uh, if you're involved in this, if you have a Gemini, definitely look up that form. A tremendous amount of useful information available there. And thanks to everybody who went before me. It's been a big help. Thanks. <laughs>